Hi and welcome back. This is David from Electric Teaching and I am continuing my quadratic formula, well, a quadratic formula and more lesson using Python. I am using PyScriptor as a, uh, an environment that's perfect for editing and creating uh, Python programs and I'm using Python 2.54. Although I did say I was hoping to make this into an executable later, I did have had some trouble doing uh, that. Uh, but hopefully this lesson is uh, giving you an idea how to use Python in other environments and other areas. Or just as a lesson, like I do, for my pre-calculus kids. All right, my pre-calculus students, excuse me. Here's our quadratic formula so far. Uh, we've asked for the input. We float the numbers, which turns them into rationals. We've done the quadratic formula in two parts, x1 and x2 variables. Think about PyScriptor. You put your mouse over it. It tells you exactly how you're using that local variable. Um, and we print it, and then we let it sleep. Let me uh, test it for you to make sure everything's working well. I want to show you how I can uh, use it in here as, as well as other places. For instance, if I'm in PyScriptor and I run it from here, and we'll just put in any numbers right now, and I'll just make sure there are uh, real solutions for this quadratic formula. So I'll go 2 for the front number, maybe negative 4 and negative 3, and we will find from down here that the x-intercept, way down here, the x-intercepts are... Uh, 2.5811, and, uh, on, and uh, that looks to be an irrational number, and a uh, negative uh, 0 0.58. So it is working, and that's how it looks in this environment. Um, to show you what it looks like if you just open it up out of the folder, uh, I lost where it was. Let me go back to where it was. Hang on one second. Pardon that delay. Uh, there, I went back to the folder that I was using, and let's see, if I double click on it without having in the PyScriptor running or running, it doesn't matter. If you just double click on it, as long as there's a Python program somewhere on the computer, um, it'll look like this. It comes up in the uh, command line area, or it's just the Python interpreter area, basically. And it's asking me the same questions. I'll throw in some more answers here to, excuse me, I'll put in some more coefficients, maybe 2, negative 5 on the x term. And let's see, negative 10 or so on the constant. And you can see my x-intercepts, again, look to be irrational. And it went away. So that's what happens when you run it as is. And if you were to run it from the idle area, and this is what it looks like if you're editing it in the idle, and you were to run it, it does, uh, it acts and runs all right here. And then the, the screen does not go away when it's running from the Python shell. And that's the word I was looking for earlier, the Python shell. Okay, so that's, let me quit this, and that's what we're doing. Now let's add more to it. For instance, I was very careful not to put in uh, answers that were imaginary. In other words, negatives that would come out of this square root part, and that would probably cause the program to crash. So what I'm going to do is create a little if statement on the discriminant. So we will go. In fact, what we should do is just label the, the run a variable that is the discriminant. So let's do that. Let's go D for discriminant is equal. Oops, again, it thought it knew what it was doing. In fact, I'm going to use a cap. Of, whoa, it really anticipates sometimes what it thinks that I'm going to do. Uh, uh, PyScriptor, and there's probably a way I can turn that off, but I figured it out for the moment. D, the discriminant, is equal to, we are going to need to float this, so I'm just going to immediately float it. I'm going to float the uh, B squared, so B star star 2 minus 4 star A star C. So this will be our discriminant, and the first thing we should do is we should test to see if that is negative or not. So what we're going to do is, as we're executing the uh, quadratic formula, or before we do it, we're going to say if the discriminant, D, is equal, well, is actually not equal, but less than 0, and then I'm going to put a colon, and hit return, and I'm going to now tell the user that you've got an imaginary solution here. So I'm just simply going to print single quote, the solution is not real, it is imaginary. 
Now, we can later maybe even have it display the imaginary solutions in I form. But right now, I'm going to be working on the real solutions. Now, what if it's not less than zero? See, this if statement saying, hey, if this is less than zero, then we're going to print this. So what we want to do is, what if it's not less than zero? What if it was zero or two or five, something on the positive? This is what we call an else statement, an else uh, part of an if else statement. So what we're doing is we're going to say else and then give it instructions. And so I'm going to say else and now do these things. So I'm going to need another colon. Again, with Python, if you've had listened to my lessons before, we want to indent it like it is an outline form. And this is in substitute. This indent is in substitute of using an additional syntax that most other programs require you use. So if the discriminant is less than zero, then print. The solution is not real. It is imaginary. But if it's not or else, then go ahead and do the commands we've already set up before, which was to calculate it. We will need to tab this over as well, this part of the program over as well. So if you highlight it and hit tab, it'll move it over. Or up here, you've got an indent function, which I'll show you. It works as well. All right, so that's looking good. Let's test it, make sure we haven't done too much that has ruined it. And I should see the answer down below in the Python interpreter or shell area. So let's hit so the run button from here just to see if this is working. Again, let's give it some numbers. Now let's give it imaginary number, imaginary uh, function. So I'm going to do a, a, an all positive with a big Y intercept. Almost always guarantees I'm going to get a positive, uh, 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 excuse me, a no x-intercept graph of a quadratic function. So let's put a 2 and then maybe a 3 and then maybe a 10. I may be wrong here. This might be not bit high enough up on the graph so that I get, a, I get imaginary solutions, but let's find out. So it said the solution is not real. It is imaginary. You know what would be really cool is if we printed that the discriminant value as well. So why don't we do that? Why don't we just add another print line? We'll print two things. We'll go the discriminant in text string. In other words, put a single quote around it. The discriminant is space. Okay. And then we're going to put the single quote, then a comma, and then just put the D variable afterwards. Let's run it again. See how it works. Okay, and we're going to put in, in high positive values, and let's see what happens. It says the solution is not real. It is imaginary, and the discriminant is negative 36. So, yeah, that would have been a problem sending it to the square root. Let's make sure the else statement still works. Let's make sure the else statement still works. So, let's test it one more time real quick. Let's put in numbers that we know will be uh, having x-intercepts. So, I'll go 1 and zero and maybe negative nine this time. See if we get my, uh, my uh, uh, factors of three and negative three and sure enough we do. So everything's working well. I'd like to keep going here about the eight minute mark. So eight and a half minute mark and now I'd like to show you how to put in the vertex. Let's have it calculate the vertex right off the bat before it even does the solution. So let's get above here, put in a new comment. Okay, and let's get the symmetry line the uh, derive the symmetry line and vertex of the function of the quadratic. So what is the symmetry line? Well, the symmetry line, which we will label as simply, how about just X? Let's, since we're using X1 down there, we probably can get away with just X. Let's use X and let's put in the symmetry line formula. And the symmetry line formula is the x-coordinate of the vertex, which is negative of b, divide parentheses, to star a. And I think it's very important to make note that that is also the first part of our quadratic formula. And there's a, a very important connection there about the symmetry of everything being balanced around it. The roots, the x-intercepts, are always exactly plus square root and minus square root of that part of the formula. So there is the x-symmetry line. How about the y-coordinate? If you have x, 
you can always plug and chug and get y. So let's have y, whoops, let's have y equal, y equal, well, if we have x, we need to plug and chug the formula. The formula we've been given by the user is ax squared plus bx plus c. So let's do a star, the x that I have right here, that's perfect, star star 2. There's the ax squared plus b star x. If b is negative, then that'll be a minus term. And then plus c. So this will calculate the actual x and y's. Okay, these are all numbers coming in, so we don't have to worry about floating them. Uh, the only reason I floated the one above is that I probably was, it might have been unnecessary, to tell you the truth. The only reason I floated the discriminant is unknown to me at the moment. In fact, I'm always curious if I delete that, would it work? I'll let you guys play around with that idea. May not have had to float that. Shouldn't have to float these. Don't have anything printed, so let's print this. Print. Whoops, tab over. Print. Single quote, the symmetry line. The symmetry line is at x equal space in quote comma um, x. Okay, and then also print the vertex is at the point space and watch how I do this. I'm going to go parentheses, close the quote. I'm going to put in comma. You have to put in the comma to let you know you've stopped that part of the instruction and I'm going to put in the x value here. I'm going to now open a new text string quote. I'm going to do a text comma in uh, single quotes. So what I'm doing is I'm just saying, hey, put a comma up right after the number. Then I'm going to put another comma up. This is part of the code, not the comma being displayed. Please forgive how, if this, forgive me if this is confusing, but it works out really cool. Now I'm going to say put in the y variable. I'm now going to put in a single quote again and have a close parenthesis to be the last part of the text string that is visible. So this kind of bounces back and forth between displaying the variables and some text around it, which in this case is the parentheses and commas. Let's see how it looks. Save and run it. Oh, we have an error. I kind of like it when we have an error. We learn from it. Looks like I've not done an ec oh, extra comma right there. So after the comma with the after the X, I had to let it know that I was given another instruction. And I forgot that little part. So lots of commas in there. Hopefully you're following that along. Again, that's this is first thing it's going to print to the screen. Then it's comma, a number for x, whatever x is, and then a comma in text, and then it's going to print the y number. Okay, so that's what's going to print, and then the, the close parentheses. Hopefully that worked. Let's test it. Um, oh, I've got another error again. What did I do wrong here? Print, boom, boom, boom. Oops, same issue. Put up the Y variable, forgot to tell a break in the conversation. And you know, there were some squiggly lines under here. PyScriptor was trying to tell me and I wasn't listening. Hopefully you're a better learner than I was in that moment. Let's throw in some numbers here. Let's throw in a two, a negative, I don't know, four and a negative seven. I have no idea. Oops, hit return. And a negative seven for the constant. I have no idea what this is gonna look like quadratic wise, but let's find out. Our symmetry line is at x equals 1 down here. That's cool. The vertex is at 1, negative 9. That was cool. And our x and intercepts are at 3.1 approximately and negative 1.1. Well, our quadratic formula is coming along nicely. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm hoping to add on a little bit more, but we'll see. Right now, I think you've got enough for a good project for your students. I'm David from Electric Teaching, and I hope you're enjoying what I'm doing. Have a great day.